Well, welcome everybody. I'm Joanne Gear. I'm executive director for the Westchester Biotech Project, and we're very happy to have you here today. I'm going to immediately introduce my partner, Michael Welling, who's going to give you some background. All right. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> So my wife believes that I founded this organization just so I could get a room of people together that has to listen to me talk. Um, and, and she's trying to get on the live link here. So hey, Suze, if you're, if you're watching. Um, <clears throat> you know, I want to give a little bit of background about how we got here today and, and some of the folks in the room here. Um, and you know, there have been a lot of efforts to sort of foster collaboration in the life sciences in our region for a very long time. I always like to credit all of those people who came before us um, as sort of paving the way and, and both helping to identify what needs to be done and quite frankly, what shouldn't be done. But there was one thing that we have that no one before us had the fortune of, of leveraging and accessing and leading on, and that is Joanne. And I do just want to give a round of applause to Joanne because <clears throat> her tireless efforts and her vision for bringing these things together and amazes me how every one of these events, despite the fire on hair nature of the last 48 hours, always comes together and, and really uh, accomplishes our goal and our vision. So thank you very much. Uh, I also want to just send uh, very uh, happy birthday wishes to Joanne. Tomorrow is a, a special birthday, so happy birthday to you as well. Um, <clears throat> you know, they say that one time is a fluke, two times is a coincidence, and three times is a trend. Well, today is our third Innovation and Research Symposium, and I think that speaks volumes to the community at large and the interest that we have garnered and all of your contributions to sort of moving this machine forward. Uh, we haven't even been in operation for two years. In fact, it's only been 22 months to this point. And I think it's fair to say we've accomplished more than I thought we ever were going to and have uncovered the opportunity, not just for partnerships and collaboration, but actual tangible challenges and solutions have been identified that I think are going to have an impact for years to come. And I think that's something uh, that we all should take great comfort and pride in uh, coming together and working together. Um, Dr. Bloom had made a comment earlier this morning about the excitement of seeing all of this community be brought together for collaboration. And I think that while there's tons of activity that have been going on in Westchester and the region, whether or not the Westchester Biotech Project were to be in existence, most of that was happening in a silo. And believe it or not, most people who are in this space in Westchester were very freely collaborating with people around the world, but not with people right here in their backyard. And I think that's, at the end of the day, what we're going to make a difference in, helping people locally find opportunities here that then creates more opportunity globally. I, I had a call yesterday with a, a senior partner of a law firm. Um, the law firm is a life science law firm. They're based in Boston. But their name partner and two of their managing partners live, guess where? Right here in Westchester. And they travel to Boston you know, Monday through Thursday every week, run their business out of there. And as they said, we would love the opportunity to do work right here in our backyard. We would love the opportunity to have an excuse to work on Fridays in the summer in Westchester and be on the golf course by 2 o'clock. So these are all things that we are working towards. We started off with our focus on our core, and our core to date has been the researchers, the data scientists, and the engineers, the people who are at the heart of everything that we are all involved in here. If you are in this room, if you're watching this live stream, if you are following along in any way the activities of the Westchester Biotech Project, it's because you have some vested interest in this industry growing. And if you don't support the researchers, the data scientists, and the engineers, there's no industry. It's as simple as that. And so we want to honor them in every way that we can. But what we also realized is all of the peripheral industries and individuals and, 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 and companies that are, are supporting them uh, is what makes this so exciting, is because this grows well beyond any of that. So 
Let me jump through here. So this is just a quick overview of a number of the programs and events that we currently have going on. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time running through all of these, but I think as a overview, it gives a great sense of the volume of things we have happening. And I encourage everyone, if you aren't already involved with one of our roundtables, to pick one, find one. Hey, we want, we want to get you involved. Here are a bunch of our initiatives. Um, the Westchester Biotech Project Europe, which we just launched uh, and truthfully has already started garnering a lot of interest from people, a lot of questions, uh, many of which we don't have answers to yet. Um, but we know that that is the basis for a lot of activity that's coming, including as a result of that announcement, having someone reached out to us to suggest Westchester Biotech Project Asia. Uh, in, in conversation with this particular law firm yesterday, they do a lot of work in Australia, and I learned all about their clinical trial rules and regulations, which is a whole nother event. Uh, but I said, okay, well, let's do Westchester Biotech Project Australia. What? what? Nothing's stopping us at this point. Um, the Westchester Certificate, which so much of that is in support of our folks here at Westchester Community College, uh, is something that I point to um, that, that, that the last thing anyone who knows me thought I would ever be involved in is helping to affect higher education and, 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 the, and, and the, the teaching of our students. But this certificate program, uh, I will tell you, it is something that is, blows my mind, uh, is so exciting, uh, is an opportunity to foster further collaboration at multiple levels. Yesterday I was at the WCA event uh, about sort of the digital community of tomorrow. One of the guest speakers was the superintendent of the White Plains Public Schools, where I happen to live, and my son is a student there. I was telling him about this. He emailed me uh, before noon yesterday saying, let's have a meeting and talk about how do we have this filter down, and how do we have our students flow into the local schools and have jobs opportunity. So we're seeing a lot of this at multiple levels. I know Joanne's ears bleed when I talk about, you know, other things, but that I think is the impact of, of what we're doing here. Um, the West Central Biotech Blueprint, uh, which Bridget Gibbons will talk about a little bit, our partnership with the county and trying to affect change and, 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 and use their leadership uh, in moving our community forward is something that I think is also going to see a lot of activity over the next few months uh, and a whole bunch of other things as well that I'm not going to jump into. But one thing that I just want to mention, and I think this is so critical, well, I tell the story that last summer, uh, when Michael Kaplowitz, who's a legislator here in Westchester and was running the Economic Development Committee, um, called me up and said, hey, Mike, I would love you to come in and make a presentation to my committee, to my committee about the Westchester Biotech Project's Economic Development Plan. And I said, that's great, sure. I hung up the phone, I look at Joanne, and I said, we did an economic development plan because I never thought that was something we were going to be in a position to do. We put that together and that has been the basis for a lot of the work that we're doing. It's been the basis for a lot of the conversations that we are having with folks outside of Westchester. And I will tell you, we have a lot of eyes and a lot of ears and a lot of conversations happening right now with organizations, with individuals who do not currently have any footprint or presence in Westchester, but want to. Just today alone, we have two people coming down from Cambridge, Massachusetts, just for the day, just to speak here. And those are some individuals that you'll, you'll learn about later. But we've got people seeing what we're doing here. And I think the worst thing we can all do is just stop asking the question why, stop saying why not, and move on. And I think that's a huge, huge thing. And I think that the, the, the funding, the support, the collaboration, that's all going to be coming very soon. This is a great, great image of what we're talking about. And this sort of, the origin of this was that economic development plan that we had to put together. And when you look at this grid, when you look at the circles in the middle, who's involved, who benefits, who has a vested interest, who do they want to work with? This is sort of the, con the connectivity that we have uncovered here. And in ways that still blow my mind, I am born and raised in Westchester. I've been raising my family, working here professionally for the last 20 years. And I am still meeting people on a weekly basis that I've never heard of, that I didn't know what they do, and they are directly involved in the life sciences in some way, shape, or form. It is amazing to me. So we know we have a lot more work to do, and it's really just a matter of what does that vision look like? And I will tell you, uh, not for today, but we are in the process right now of sort of reviewing, okay, two years in, we've accomplished a lot. 
What's the next phase? What's the next model? Uh, who do we need to engage with and what do we want to accomplish? And when you look at this chart here, you really see that the options are almost endless about what we can do. Some upcoming programs, and again, we encourage you not just to share today's live stream with friends, family, colleagues, uh, yourself if you have to step out during the day, uh, but we have some other upcoming events that we encourage everyone to participate in. We encourage you certainly today, show social media, uh, share it wherever you can, wherever you have people who are you're engaging with, and certainly please find opportunities to participate, attend, uh, and help spread the word. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything there of specific. No, we're, we're covering all interesting areas, I think, is, is the takeaway there. And then, of course, we would not be here today without all of the support uh, and, 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 quite frankly, tireless work from all of our partners. And it's clearly too many to mention all today. Um, but when you look at this list and, you know, WCA, who's been one of our partners from the start, um, Skanska as well, who's, I mean, this is a construction company, you know, we're not building anything, but they believe in the vision of what we're doing and wanted to be part of that. Um, uh, we've got who else I want to mention here. Obviously, Westchester Community College is there, Biomed Realty and Lyra, who are some of our newer partners here. It really is amazing what's happening. Uh, and I wanted to also just mention uh, down below here our friends at Harrison Edwards and Jerry's in the back there who have done so much work in helping us get the message out there. Uh, and Jerry, thank you for all your work. And, and if you haven't seen my, my public access TV interview, that's you get yourself a, a, an adult beverage and sit down for a few laughs and we'll, we'll make sure we share that we'll, we'll, we share that with everybody but again thank you to everyone on the screen everyone who's in the room everyone who's contributed in time sweat um, funding whatever it is again we, we would not be here without you so before I introduce our next speaker I just want to say one more time how much I am personally inspired by all of you uh, and the work that we're doing here um, for those of you who don't know, I'm not a, you know now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not, a, I'm not an academic. I was brought to this world through a personal experience with my now 13-year-old son. It is a happy ending story, and I'm not going to uh, sort of walk everyone through that story again today, but at the age of one, we spent six months in Sloan Kettering where he had two separate unrelated bone marrow transplants. As a result of his condition, he has permanent vision loss, and he is legally blind, although if you saw him today, you'd never know any of this. Fire engine red hair. Uh, on Saturday, he gets his black belt in Taekwondo, and then nine days later, he will be performing musically at Radio City Music Hall for the sixth time in his 13 years. He is my inspiration, and he is the reason that I do all this, and my vision is not only do I feel the need to give back in any way that I can, but if we can bring people together and have one, chi one child, one student come out of Westchester Community College who's now in passion to be a researcher to go work at Sapiens Therapeutics and help be part of the team that cures one patient's diagnosis of glioblastoma, all of this is worth it. It really, truly is. Also, as his mother says, we want him to have a job when he gets back here after college. So we want to make sure that we've got a, 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 an environment for him uh, long term as well. So for our next speaker who I would like to introduce, it is my honor to introduce to you Dr. Belinda Miles, president of Westchester Community College. Uh, Dr. Miles joined the school here in 2015, and for anyone who knows her or has read about her knows that she is deeply committed to student success and completion. Um, she has significantly increased the college's three-year graduation rate, something that I know she is very proud of, as well as any of her, her staff here will we'll talk very fondly of those efforts. Her national leadership includes board or advisory roles at the American Association of Community College, COMBAS, Higher Education Resource Services, American Association of Colleges and Universities President's Trust, and the National Junior College Athletic Association. In addition to having received numerous and well-deserved awards, Dr. Miles is also highly regarded regional and national presenter on a range of topics, including community colleges, as a disruptive innovation in academia that fosters an equitable and inclusive democracy. Locally, Dr. Miles is a member of the Board of Directors for our own Business Council of Westchester, the Westchester Putnam Workforce Investment Board, and the Westchester Medical Center Healthcare Transformation Workforce Committee, 
and most importantly, she's a good friend to the Westchester Biotech Project. So thank you, Dr. Miles. I'd like to say a few words. I wasn't going to take your purse, Joanne. <laughs> I was worried that it would ring. I thought it Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Michael, for that, uh, for that introduction. And yes, you, I do have a sense of humor. It's a pleasure to greet you all and welcome you to Westchester Community College today. And how interesting that I'm on the stage as we're talking about biotech investments in Westchester County It's so uh, in life sciences. Very exciting, very, um, very futuristic to think about what the possibilities are. When we think about the ways that uh, medicines, uh, stem cell transplants, if we look around in our own families and our own circles, we probably know people who are being impacted by the kind of work that we're seeking to have an investment in, in Westchester County. I know that I'm connected to that world in ways that are profound and we're all living longer if we're blessed to do so. And so we want to be able to have the technologies and the resources and the pharma that are going to help us to be able to thrive uh, with this, uh, this dash that is our life between the time we start and the time we're not here. And so we want to support that. And in coming into Westchester Community College, of course, what a new president does is looks, looks around, where, what is the community, what, what is the context in which this institution sits, how can we make an impact, who are our students? We are one of 30 community college in the State Uni University of New York system, SUNY. And so we are also SUNY's most diverse campus in terms of the student population. About 55% of our students come part-time, and so the other roughly half are, are full-time students in a more traditional mode. And uh, we border the Bronx, so we have to remind SUNY that there are other parts of the state, and we have a relationship when we reach out to the community and partner with um, organizations that we share that border. So we look at hospital systems. You mentioned the... Um, the uh, healthcare transformation uh, process. I was very deliberate in coming into this role to join the kinds of boards that would provide access to industry because I knew it would be important for this institution. Uh, you've heard Dr. Ron Bloom's name mentioned several times. Dr. Bloom is our Dean of Healthcare Technologies and Applied Learning. A little complicated title there. Healthcare Technologies, what does that mean? And we know about traditional healthcare fields, nurses, respiratory therapists, et cetera, but health technologies are something that's continuing to emerge. You're hearing bioscience, and we understand that data is involved in, in the way research is conducted and in, in, in large data systems. So we've now added to our our roster, health information technology, and how, what are some of the emerging fields that are related to life sciences and healthcare. So it's not just training to be the RN, but how do we expose our students to more of a range of opportunities? And so he's been very aggressive in helping us to understand that our students need to have opportunities in the field, and so apply learning is part of his title as well. He works with Glenetta Phillips in doing that, and Jelaine Williams is here. She is our coordinator of our career resources and our career center for students so that they have a pathway and knowledge and information that can help them right out the gate. And when students come from out of high school or even adult learners, many don't know about the range of career opportunities. And lots of people ask the question, what, what is the potential role of the community college when we're talking about researchers and engineers, but we are that pipeline to, the, to that pathway to those kinds of jobs, and we have a rich resource of students that will transfer to four-year institutions uh, for those who seek that opportunity. We have outstanding partners with many of the individuals whose logos you saw on the previous slide. I didn't bring a slideshow. I could have brought one. Next time, next, next let me put my slides up. But, uh, but we partner across the region, across the state, and across the nation in, with uh, partnership opportunities for, for our graduates, and they do very, very well. There is data that demonstrates that many community college transfer students outperform native students at their four-year colleges and universities. We have a very determined lot of students, and we have indeed focused on improving the graduation rate. 
And uh, many students come to community colleges thinking, I'll go a semester or a year and then transfer. And we want them to transfer with our degree. The associate degree does have value in the marketplace. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Foundation funded a study that we conducted uh, on looking at the middle skills in the Hudson Valley. And indeed, they found that these health technology careers were one of the big clusters to pay attention to in the Hudson Valley, along with hospitality careers and along with emerging IT careers, not just the standard computer science, but again, looking at cybersecurity and some other emerging aspects of that work. So we're really excited about the work that uh, Dr. Bloom is doing. Uh, dean Ray Houston is with us. He's the Dean of Science, Engineering, and Mathematics. And so we've organized our, our, our work in terms of appropriate career clusters so that students can find their home, find their peers, find the places where they can gather information about what opportunities exist for them. I liken it to the Harry Potter sorting hat. They have a sense of place and belonging when they arrive, and they can be on track as soon as possible. The technical term we use in, um, in our field is guided pathways, but now you know it as Harry Potter, Potter sorting hat. I welcome our faculty who have joined today because all of these changes in industry and in the region have implications for what's happening in the classroom. There may be uh, modules or units or guest speakers that can enhance the learning that's taking place. So again, our students are ex exposed to ideas that can help them along their pathway. And front and center, we have Bridget Gibbons, who's our guest here from the county. We, uh, you are everything economic development for Westchester County, so it's just appropriate that you'd be front and center, and we're delighted to have you here as well. So again, that's a very long welcome. Uh, we look forward to this continued partnership, uh, and uh, we are excited to have you here and to have you be part of the learning experience that uh, we enjoy here at the college each day. Thank you and happy learning. Thank you.